And I saw the word, you know, it was about protection today. And I thought, wow, I don't think I've ever talked about protection before. And it's an interesting word, protection, because just saying that you need protection implies that we don't get it. And I'm including myself in this. You see, that's the difference between knowing your true nature, knowing your divinity, knowing your oneness with God, where there's no need for protection. That is your protection. And then our human experience where it appears we need protection. Do you see the difference? So it's sort of a catch-22. And today I thought I'd talk about what is protection? Where do we find it? How do we get it? What do we do about protection? We live in a world of duality on this earth plane. And in duality, as the bumper sticker says, stuff happens. Notice I use the word stuff. <laughs> Just choosing to be born into this world of duality. Just choosing to come here opens you to the world of duality, which means good things will happen and bad things will happen. Happy things will be here, sad things will be here. Just that one choice to choose to be here opens you to the whole experience. But there's a reason for everything and a blessing into it. And that's why just surrendering to the mystery when we have to walk through something unpleasant, surrendering and knowing we are one with God, the power of love's presence is our protection. Meanwhile, as uh, the young man in the best exotic marigold hotel, remember that movie? <laughs> that young man that kept saying, everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not the end. Wasn't that one of the best sayings that ever? I love that. I think of that all the time now. So how do we stay protected? Well, let me count the ways. There's an old unity expression. I don't know if it started in unity, but I like to think it did. Keep prayed up. Keep prayed up. Now, what does that mean? If there's a problem, we don't change, we don't pray to change the problem. What do we pray to change? Our consciousness to rise up above the problem. So keeping prayed up means if I've prayed enough to know the truth of my being, because we're not praying, we don't pray to change the, the mind of some man in the sky. We're not changing God's mind. We're changing our belief. We pray enough until our consciousness is changed. And when we've done that, when we're prayed up, no matter what happens to us, no matter what's before us to walk through, we're going to be okay because we're prayed up. Deep inside, we know the truth of our being. It doesn't mean we like it. It doesn't mean everything's pleasant, but we have the power of the presence to walk through it. Wherever I am, God is. Together, wherever, wherever I, am, I am, God, God is. is. That is your protection. Now, I had a, a friend who had a Christian science grandmother, and she raised him with the belief. She used to tell him, since God is always with you, there's no safer place to be than where you are right now. Isn't that cute? Since God is always with you. Let's say that is an affirmation, but let's put I instead of you. And we'll say it in three parts. Since God is always with me, there's no safer place to be than where I am right now. One more time. Since God is always with me, there's no safer place to be than where I am right now. And if you want to shorten that, the shortest, easiest prayer is simply God is, or love is, or God is present. Oh, I've stomped my feet around the house saying, God is present, God is present. You know, I love to stomp my feet when I pray. It gives it more energy. <laughs> or I trust you, God. I don't like this, but I trust you, God. Those short little prayers are all you need. Now, we all have stories. Everybody in here has a story of how we had to walk through something unpleasant, but there was a presence that carried us through. Does everybody in here not have a story like that in your life where you were just carried through something? And today the example I'm going to use is, I think, what was it, about four and a half years ago, something like that, almost four years, that Michael had a stroke. Now, we were on vacation in California visiting my son. And you get sort of a false sense of security on vacation, don't you? <laughs> like, what can happen? I'm on vacation. 
All of a sudden, Michael's having a stroke, miles from home. We don't have a clue where any hospital is, any doctor is. We don't even know what's happening with them. Repeat. Since God is always with me, there's no safer place to be than where I am right now. Again, since God is always with me, there's no safer place to be than where I am right now. So we have to trust in the flow. Trust whatever's happening, even though we're miles away from home and Michael is stroking. But divine grace is always present in spite of what's going on. Now grace number one, my son was there. And my son is just a, you know, he's mean on a, what do you call it, on a cell phone in a car. So he's driving and cell phoning until he finds where to take us. He doesn't have a clue either, but he's got a cell phone and a car. And all of a sudden we pull up to the closest hospital. God's grace is always there. We walked into the emergency room and there was this wall plaque. And it said this hospital emergency room was rated the top five in the country. Here we were led to a hospital top five in the country of excellent care in the emergency. Wherever I am, God is, right? Grace number three. Michael, in the end, has had very few side effects. No, he'll tell you he has more of them, but if you didn't know it, you certainly wouldn't know it. The first couple days, he was very slow and not responsive, but every day he got better and better. What did the man from the movie say? Everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not the end. It's important during these times to stay out of judgment. Don't we want to judge everything? This is good, this is bad. We right away put a judgment on it. Everything just is. And the peace that you feel lies in knowing that this just is without putting a judgment on it. I kept thinking of the story in the Bible. You know, some of those stories you just assume tear out and throw away. There's a few stories in there I don't like. And the one that I really don't like is G Jesus is talking to his two friends, Peter and John. And he's telling Peter, giving sort of a, a premonition on how Peter is going to die. And he says to Peter, I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you don't want to go. Ooh, that really scared Peter. And he looked at John. You know, John is always the one that Jesus loves. So every time you hear about John, he's the one that Jesus loved. And all the other apostles must have been really jealous. So Peter looks at Jesus and says, well, what about him? Can't you just hear him pouting? Well, what's going to happen to him? And Jesus sounds kind of harsh. He said, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Come follow me. Ooh. I mean, we have to go sometimes where we don't want to go. Haven't you ever felt like somebody tied your hands and took you? your hands were tied? There was nothing you could do. And you had to walk through something. But the soul conspires for our good. And that's where surrendering to the mystery. I don't know why I'm having to walk through this. I don't know what this is about. But I have to trust the power of the presence right here, right now. Are the ones who are taking the Tuesday class with us, no. But if there's some kind of plan, we don't understand how it all works. But everything that happens, happens for a reason. Sometimes our hands are tied, and it feels like life is taking us where we don't want to go. Nothing you can do. Have you ever felt that way? Wherever we are, God is. Grace number four. By the third day in California in the hospital, I was getting kind of stressed <coughs> and tired. And I thought, well, you know what? I need to go to the chapel. So I started asking around. I started looking for the chapel. Every hospital has a chapel, right? Couldn't find it. Finally, I asked somebody. They said, well, we used to have one, but we made it into a conference room. And I thought, well, that explains a lot. You know? <laughs> so when I couldn't find a, a chapel, there wasn't any. 
I thought, okay, if I can't find a chapel, I need chocolate. <laughs> and it was really funny because just as I was thinking, no chapel, I got to have chocolate. I get on the elevator and there's a woman on the elevator. As soon as I walk in, she said to me, I need chocolate. <laughs> and so I found this kindred spirit. We both needed that. Anyway, so I go to the cafeteria for some chocolate, right? And the cafeteria is sort of an L-shaped room and I've never been all the way back. But I just wanted to be by myself with my chocolate. So I went all the way to the back of the L, and here there was a huge window, and outside there was a waterfall and trees, and I thought, wow, I found my chapel right here in the back of the cafeteria with my chocolate and the waterfall and the trees. Wherever you are, God is. And when you live in that knowing, you can find a chapel anywhere just by going within and being still. Would you repeat one more time with me? Since God is always with me together, since God is always with me, there's no safer place to be than where I am right now. So we landed in a hospital that was top five in emergency care. Michael was okay. I was having some quality time with my son, and I had chocolate. I was doing all right. In the 12 powers of the Christ, one of them is right judgment. And the only right judgment is no judgment. Now, we're not talking about discernment. That's a whole other thing. You have to discern what to do sometimes. But nothing is good or bad. That's what judgment's about. Everything just is. And when we let go of judgment, and enter that flow, enter the mystery and the flow of the divine, we are able to walk through anything. Well, you've all heard the Zen story. I won't tell the whole long story about the farmer whose horses ran off. And the neighbor said, oh, that's bad. All my horses ran off. And the farmer says, oh, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. So he sends, what does he do? He sends his son out to find the horses. And the son comes back with a broken leg. And the neighbor said, oh, that's bad. And the farmer says, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The next week the army comes and they take all the young men in the village but his because his son had a broken leg. And the neighbor says, oh, that's good. And the farmer says, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Your whole life can go back and forth that way. Is this good? Is this bad? Well, we don't really know. Everything just is. Everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not the end. Grace number five. Trust the presence in the present. We don't always like what's going on in the present. Sometimes we can't do anything about where we are. We're not happy there. But we can always trust the presence in the present. Wherever I am, God is. There we were in California. We had to change our flight. And you know how that can be. A lot of airlines want to charge you. And I called my travel agent. She said, well, that'll be another $700. Oh, wow. oh yes, that's what I said. <laughs> and at first, I, you know, I wanted to get upset. And I thought, no, I'm not going to get upset. I'm going to trust. We're going to be able to do this. The money will show up somehow. We'll be able to make it. So I said, OK. But before I hung up, she said, well, let me try one other thing. Let me call one other place. She called me back about 10 minutes later. She said, I got the charge removed. No charge to change, your, to change your ticket. Wherever we are, God is. On the trip home, we had to have a connecting flight through Phoenix. And the flight was delayed an hour. Was that good? Was that bad? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Because it was delayed an hour, our friends in Tulsa, who were going to pick us up, didn't have to come to the airport till later, and there was a big storm going on. You don't haven't lived till you live through a Tulsa storm. There, you know, tornadoes all over the place. But because the flight was delayed, they didn't have to drive. Was that good? Was that bad? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. At that time, it was good that the flight was delayed. Michael's major concern was, will I be able to drum again? <laughs> maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. It looks like it's working just fine. Mm -hmm. So let's recap. Your protection is in the presence. Not the present. Nothing out there can protect you. 
absolutely nothing you go to out there can be an assurance of your protection. It's all in here. Wherever I am, let's repeat that. Wherever I am, God is. We let go of judgment and trust the flow of life. Trust the mystery. Our soul conspires for our good. We ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. We ask the Holy Spirit for help. And then we act on those promptings. And one more time, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not the end, or it's not okay, it's not the end. Let's take that into prayer. Oh God, we do not always like what we see in the world of appearances, but we trust your presence. And we ask your Holy Spirit to move in and through us to lift us to that place of knowing the truth of our being, to lift us to that assurance that all is well, for we trust, we truly trust your presence in the present. And we would move and have our being in that knowing. We are safe, we are secure. You are our source and supply. And all our needs are met right now. Each one of you right now, if there is any concern that you may be carrying, let it go for just a moment. And say in your heart, wherever I am, God is. I place my trust in God. And I walk forth confidently, with grace and with ease. My life and world is unfolding in perfect divine order. And I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, as I pray this in the deepest nature of the living Christ within us all. And so it is. Amen.